In the western region of China during the year 255 BC, there was a kingdom named Qin. Within this kingdom, there resided a young orphan boy named Li Xin. One fateful day, Xin was being transported to a nearby village to be sold into slavery when he came across a cavalry unit led by the legendary Sky General. Intrigued by the sight, Xin was immediately captivated. Upon reaching the village, Xin encountered another slave named Pio, and the two quickly became friends. They shared a common desire to escape their current status as slaves and dreamed of becoming renowned generals in the future. With this shared aspiration, they began to train with swords together, supporting and strengthening their bond of friendship as they grew into adulthood. Through their diligent practice and hard work, Sin and Pio developed into skilled swordsmen and formidable fighters. During one of their training sessions, a general named Cheng observes Pio's impressive sword fighting abilities and commends him for it. The following day, General Cheng seeks out Uncle Wo and informs him that the royal party is recruiting soldiers from various regions, and he requests permission to take Pio to the kingdom to train as his special soldier. While Xin does not receive the same opportunity, he is happy for his friend and supports Pio in pursuing his dream. Before parting ways, Sin and Pio engage in one final practice session, reaffirming their commitment to each other and their shared dream of becoming great generals. Sin is determined to work even harder so that he can catch up to Pio and become a royal soldier, bringing him one step closer to their ultimate goal. The departure of his friend Pio served as a motivation for Xin to train even harder, hoping to one day be recruited as a royal soldier himself. However, several days later, Sin received a shocking surprise when Pio arrived, gravely injured. Pio informed Sin of a rebellion that had broken out in the royal court of Qin, with power being contested between the king's younger brothers. In the midst of the conflict, Pio became a victim, and with his last breath, he handed Sin a map and instructed him to go to the marked meeting point. Although Sin was initially confused by Pio's explanations, he understood the importance of leaving before the royal troops could find him. With heavy heart, Sin left Pio's body behind, but he was filled with a fierce determination to seek revenge. During his journey, Sin finds himself surrounded by a group of thugs and is forced to fight them off. Thanks to his intensive training, he is able to easily defeat the group on his own. Continuing on his journey, Sin eventually arrives at a small village, where he discovers a hut inhabited by a man named King Kin, who had fled from the kingdom. King Qin reveals to Xin that General Cheng had brought Pio to the kingdom because of his striking resemblance to him. The plan was to deceive the royal officials who had betrayed and staged a coup with King Qin's younger brother, Prince Sikyo. Meanwhile, the royal army troops arrive at Uncle Wu's house and discover Pio's lifeless body. General Ji, an accomplice of Prince Sikyo, realizes that he had mistakenly killed Pio instead of King Qin. On the other hand, Sin finds himself suddenly attacked by an assassin sent by Qing Zhao, Yin's younger brother. Using the swordsmanship skills he has learned, Sin fights off the assassin and ultimately succeeds in killing him. King Yin then reveals to Xin that Pio had been prepared from the beginning to replace him if the situation became dangerous, due to their striking facial resemblance. This information angers and disappoints Xin, as it seems that the Qin kingdom had been willing to sacrifice Pio's life without truly appreciating it. Him. King Qin explains to Xin that he must stay alive to prevent the royal power from falling into the hands of his younger brother, who is known for his cruelty and corruption. He believes that if this were to happen, the kingdom would be destroyed. King Qin then invites Xin to join him in forming a new army to reclaim Prince Saikyo, so that Pio's sacrifice and death would not be in vain. Along the way, Xin and King Nin encounter a girl named Yi Liu Dio from the Mountain Tribe who offers to guide them in exchange for payment. Meanwhile, Prince Sikyo is furious and disappointed after learning that the assassin sent to kill King Kin has been killed and King Kin is still alive. The following day, as King Kin Dio Xin were walking through the forest, they are once again suddenly attacked by, by an assassin wielding a poison needle weapon. Although the assassin initially overpowers him with his technique, but Xin is finally able to defeat him after a tough fight and finally decapitate him with his sword. However, shortly thereafter, Li Xin began to feel the effects of the poison needle and started to lose consciousness. Fortunately, King Qin was able to save him and nurse him back to health. After a few days, Li Xin finally regained consciousness, and we see they are currently hiding in an abandoned place. King Yin then revealed to Li Xin that he and Qing Zhao had different mothers. Dio's mother came from a dancer and humble background 
While Qing Zhou's mother family were royal, this made Qing Zhou feel that King Yin was unworthy of the throne because of his status, which ultimately sparked the rebellion and the ongoing civil war. Suddenly, a group of royal soldiers entered their hiding place. Fortunately, the soldiers were under the command of General Chang, who remained loyal to King Qin. But Prince Seikyo was unaware that General Cheng was loyal to King Qin. With General Cheng's help, King Qin devised a plan to reclaim the throne from Prince Seikyo. On the other hand, Prince Seikyo declares himself the new king in front of the entire army, even though he hasn't managed to kill King Qin. On the other hand, King Qin was feeling pessimistic because his army was significantly outnumbered by the royal army. One of his generals suggested that they seek the help of the mountain tribes in forming a larger army alliance. King Qin agreed and ordered his army to travel to the mountain tribal area. After a long and challenging journey, they arrived at the border region of the mountain tribes. However, they were not welcomed warmly by the mountain tribal troops and were instead taken captive by them. The group was brought before the leader of the mountain tribe, the young Duan He Yang. Duan He Yang ordered one of her soldiers to execute Shin, but Shin fought back using his sword skills. Qin attempted to explain to Duan He Yang that despite past conflicts between the kingdom of Qin and the mountain tribe, they shared the same goals. If they truly wanted to honor their ancestors who had sacrificed themselves, they should work together to fulfill their ancestors' hopes and goals. Qin's statement impressed the tribe leader and Duan He Yang removed her mask and agreed to form an alliance with King Qin. King Qin and his team devised a strategy to attack the royal forces from multiple directions. Qin and General Cheng would lead the first army while King Qin would disguise himself as a member of the Mountain Tribe and lead the Second Army, along with the Mountain Tribe and its leader. The following day, as the army of King Qin and the Mountain Tribe arrived in the kingdom, the Mountain Tribe leader informed the commander of the kingdom that her troops would join Prince Saikyu's army. Upon hearing this, the royal commander allowed the Mountain Tribe troops to enter the kingdom. Once the Mountain Tribe and King Qin's army had successfully entered the kingdom, they immediately launched an attack on the soldiers guarding the gate. Following the plan, King Yin and his troops initiate an attack. Xin and a group of soldiers are sent through an underground passage, while King Yin, Duan He Yang, and their troops face off against Qing Zhao's loyal forces. The mountain tribe's fighting abilities and physical strength proved to be a significant advantage for King Qin's army, and they were able to defeat most of the royal soldiers. Meanwhile, Xin and the first army had to face a powerful giant monster to infiltrate the secret passage. Although the troops initially struggled to defeat the monster, Shin ultimately managed to kill it with a powerful sword strike. After that, Shin and the first squad successfully entered the royal palace to confront and defeat Prince Saikyo. Prince Saikyo sends General Zuosi to confront King Yin and his troops. They engage in one-on-one -on -one battle. The two engage in intense battle. General Zuosi initially gains the upper hand and heavily injures Shin. However, Shin is reminded of his friend's death and his quest for revenge. With a surge of determination, he rises and delivers a powerful strike with his sword, ultimately killing Zuos. After witnessing General Ji's death, Prince CQ fled from the palace but found himself surrounded by King Qin and the Mountain Tribe army at the palace gates. King Qin defeated Prince CQ with ease, delivering a decisive blow. Shortly after, General Oki, the strongest general of the neighboring kingdom, approached King Qin and inquired about the battle. King Qin explained that his goal was to reclaim the royal throne to prevent royal traitors from abusing their power. He intends to unite all the kingdoms in Japan to promote justice and peace across all the kingdoms. The general then tells that he will have his full support. One of the royal generals who remained loyal to Prince Sikyo was unable to accept King Qin's victory and immediately ordered his troops to attack General Oki and King Qin. However, General Oki was confident and defeated all of the soldiers with a single attack. The loyal general then attempted to attack King Qin in anger, but Shin intervened and killed him with his sword. General Oki praised Shin's bravery and predicted that he would become one of the strongest generals in the kingdom in the future. Shin shares his aspiration to become a great sky general in the future, inspired by General Wonky Wonky. The general smiles and promises to meet Shin on the battlefield in the future. With the victory, the movie comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed the explanation. For more, please don't forget to like and subscribe.